So turn with me in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 11 through 18. We're going to talk about access available for all. Access. Something we take for granted until access is denied. If you go to the next slide, Wayne. How frustrating is access denied? Why won't this login work? I thought you had the keys to the house. No. Who left the keys in the car and then locked it? We've been locked out of relationships where someone has cut us off and, and uh, decided that a, a life or a lifestyle was more important than family ties and friend, the ties of friendship. Maybe we're just denied acceptance. A lot, of, a lot of us have gone through periods where we faced rejection or abandonment, and we dealt with the loneliness of that and struggle with that. Access is something that we take for granted until it's not there. And then when it's not there, suddenly it's a really big deal. It's a really big deal. Let's face it. Uh, when you're off somewhere besides your home and you, you go to pay for a meal and that card that you've depended on, they say access denied, rejected, all that, suddenly your whole world comes to, comes to an end. And we had the experience last December of Tony calling and saying, hey, uh, what's going on here? Well, did you just spend $3,000 in such and such England? No. No, we did not. We, we have never been to the UK. Well, we'll work on fixing that. We'll work fast. We don't want to wash dishes, right? We have that whole kind of thing. And so access is very important, and to, uh, uh, but we don't recognize it uh, until it's, we're denied that. Well, you and I, because we are sinful by nature and we have a track record of sin and sinfulness, would be denied access to God based on our own merits because God cannot allow sin. Holy God cannot allow sin into his heaven or his presence. And so we would not be able to stand before God. And this, the frightening thing is, is that billions of people are going to stand before God without knowing Christ. And they're going to be denied access to heaven because they never received his gift of salvation. And so access denied, man, it's frustrating here. It's frightening hereafter. And so we want to look today at how God has provided access that is available for all. Now remember, it's not automatic. We always say that. It's available for all, but it's not automatic. And so we're going to look at that, and uh, we're going to start out in just verses 11 and 12. He says, uh, Paul writes to the, the, the Ephesians, and he says, So then... Remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcised by those called the circumcised. And this is done in the flesh by human, human hands. And at that time you were without Christ, excluded from the citizenship of Israel, and foreigners to the covenant of promise. So what Paul does is he starts to point out to them He's talked about how we are saved by grace and we're saved to do good works. We went through that in the first part of chapter 2. Now he points out, said, listen, at one time you were excluded from this. You were living outside the realm. And he says, you were, uh, there were divisions in the flesh. There were racial divisions. Uh, there was a, a, a racial alienation. And so Let's face it, in, the, in that world, the Gentiles were not that crazy about the Jews. The Jews were less than friendly with uh, the Gentiles. Uh, and there was a very big uh, division there. And if you go back to the book of Acts, we can see where uh, as God began to span that gap, he did it with Peter, who said, uh, you know, he told, hey, see all this stuff? Take and eat it. He goes, I'm not going to eat that. That's unclean. And it took him a while, and Peter struggled with that. And even though he saw it face to face with the, in Cornelius' house and how God had extended grace to the Gentiles, he still struggled with that, and we can read about that later on in the book of Galatians. So there was a, a racial division and a racial alienation. Not only that, there was a moral alienation. 
because those who were practicing Jews were trying their best or giving some effort to follow 613 rabbinical laws, uh, or at least saying they were, right? And, and they, were, they were going through all that, and they were looking down on these Gentiles who, uh, who had fertility cults, and they offered this, and they had these idols, and although the idols and the fer fertility cults kind of looked like fun, you know, uh, they looked down their nose at that. Well, the Gentiles looked at them. What, you say there's only one God? We've got all these gods. Lots is better than one, right? And they had all this. There was a moral alienation. And so they would view them as unclean, and they would view them as whatever. And because of that, but all of that was rooted in our spiritual alienation, because everyone outside of Christ was alienated from God. But these are divisions of the flesh. Now, isn't it interesting that the divisions that Paul writes about in the first century A.D. to people living in Asia Minor, modern-day Turkey, are the same divisions that we here talked about and discussed and ranted and raved about today. There's a racial alienation. There's a moral alienation. There are those now who are proclaiming as a part of their, their political uh, platform things that we view as base ungodliness and affront to God and something that, that uh, it's, nothing, it's nothing more than self-destructive sin. And so we look at that, we're still dealing with that. But God has made provision for us to overcome the divide of the flesh through Jesus. And we can see that in verse 13 through 15. He says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility in his flesh. He made of no effect the law consisting of commands and expressed in reconciliations so he might create in himself one new man from the two resulting in peace. I want to focus on verse 13. He says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ for he is our peace. He says, so it doesn't matter how far away from God you were. It doesn't matter how far in the depths or the muck you were. In Christ's blood, you are brought near to the heart and the throne of God. You are brought into a right relationship with him. And say, so you've been brought in by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. Now, so how do we deal with racial divisions? Well, Christ has to be our peace. You know, that we see Christ and what Christ would have me to do, and how Christ would have me to behave, and how Christ would have me to love and sacrifice and give, rather than, well, where, do you, where are you from? And, and it's my hope that we, we live in that, that, uh, that state of being more in tune with what Jesus says than more in tune with what the media says about how we are to relate to one another when it comes to racial divisions. Uh, and there's cultural divisions, too. Now, one of the great things that's happening in our state that I know about, because I got to be in on the ground floor of this, in West Phoenix, they are starting, or have started, it's in its planning stages, a new African church for people from Uganda, Rwanda, and, and another, you know, those neighboring countries from there. Now, they don't worship like we do. Their singing and their songs are, are much different. Now, one day, I'm going to go visit that church, and I'm going to tell you why. Because the, the pastor who is starting it is a man named Jean de Du in Dahiliwe. And I had two years to learn how to pronounce his name, right? And, and, and so Jean Dedou, and most of you have met him, he uh, sent me an email and said, Pastor, would you, 
would you give me a letter of recommendation? And all. Wait. I get to be a part? Yeah, listen, I'm going to... If I, if you get a guest speaker sometime, you know, after August, Don will be available, you know. We'll have that. that I, I might be in Phoenix just taking it in. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I get there, I'm going to look completely out of place. And, and they're probably, the way they do things, I'm going to probably be as befuddled as Joe Biden when the teleprompter goes out. However... The idea is, that's my brother. And I want to go rejoice in what God is doing. And you know what? I'm certain that they will welcome me with open arms. So I say that, I say all that into, when we really get down to the heart of faith and what really matters, race doesn't matter. Background doesn't matter. Economic status doesn't matter. Matter of fact, Paul says that, said that to the Colossians. Now there's neither, neither Greek nor Jew nor Scythian or barbarian. Hey, we're all one in Christ. Our goal is to let Jesus be our peace so that we are all one in Christ. And so as we look at that, we see a peace and a reconciliation among men provided through the blood of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is our peace, that he breaks down divisions, he unifies believers in faith, and he replaces the law with grace. It, it says, he made of no effect the law consisting of commands and expressed in regulations. So he might create himself one new man from the two. It says we're all the same. We all come together. And we've taken that law, he said that it, had no, it has no effect on you. Because you're saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God's laid out for us to do. Now, remember, you used to be here, but this is who you are now. But I want to point out something. Peace and reconciliation among men is a secondary blessing. It's a secondary blessing. That's one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit working in us. And you think about this. What is it? Peace, kindness, goodness, love, forgiveness, gratitude. We bear the fruit of the Spirit. What are, it's a secondary blessing. And so the, the, the restoration of relationships between men, women, races, different uh, people from different continents, people with different traditions, people with different, uh, you know, this is the way we do it. Well, we don't do it that way. This is the way, okay, all of that falls to the back. It falls to the back of the line because we're at peace with one another in the faith because we're, Christ provides that. But that's secondary. What do I mean by that secondary? Well, it's, pretty, it's really good and it's really cool. It's really great. It's really awesome. However, the primary blessing is a lot better. Paul would write in Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus, because the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. As we go on to verses 16 and 17 in Ephesians, Paul would say to them, he did this so that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross by which he put the hostility to death. He came and proclaimed the good news of peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. You see, the primary blessing is that we have peace made available with God. That's the primary blessing. Now I would say this, knowing what I know about primary and secondary, generally you don't get to secondary without the primary. Does that make sense? You have first, then you have the, okay. Well, prim primarily, 
we want to rejoice that we have been redeemed and restored and we have that Christ has reconciled us and we are at peace with God through the blood of Jesus. And so primarily we're excited about being reconciled to God. And now because we have been reconciled to God, we can be reconciled to one another. So it's secondary. Now listen, there's nothing wrong with a secondary blessing. Secondary blessing is great. But let's face it, the primary blessing is awesome. I mean, that's, that's, where the, you know, that's where the heart of the matter is. He came and he proclaimed the good news of peace to those of you who were far away. Paul would go on to say in Romans 8, 3 and 4, For what the law could not do, since it was weakened by the flesh, God did. What you couldn't do in the law, God did. He condemned sin in the flesh by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as a sin offering in order that the law's requirement would be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. So Christ provides peace and reconciliation with God. He provides peace and reconciliation with God. Jesus' purpose in this is to reconcile men and women to God regardless of race, ethnicity, or sinful past. Now, there were a lot of people who experienced the miraculous touch of Jesus recorded in the Gospels. And they came from different regions, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, and they had different sin problems. Right? Now, some were common thieves. Some were bureaucratic thieves. Some were hookers and harlots. (gasps) Some were drunks. Some were demon-possessed. Some were just sick. But they all received that touch. You know, it didn't matter what their ethnicity was. Didn't matter what their hometown was. Didn't matter what their tradition was. It doesn't matter what their sinful past was. What mattered? They encountered Jesus. They believed in Jesus. And Jesus changed their lives. Now, what do we have in common this morning? I know for a fact that none of you were raised in Wyandotte, Oklahoma. Uh, And with the exception of Tony, I'm going to guess that no one else in the room has ever been to Wyandotte, Oklahoma. Uh, You know, it's, it's not that hard to get to. When you get to Phoenix, just get on US 60 and keep, stay on US 60 for, I don't know. 1,500 miles or so, I mean, because it, it kind of winds around and goes through up, you know, and you go through the pan. And it, yeah, it's crazy. But, but when you get to the last town in Oklahoma, before you get to the Missouri border, which is only five miles away, there it is in all its glory. Well, that's my background. A town of 300 people. Man, it was grand. Right. I know I'm going to guess nobody else was, we, you know, El Paso, Texas. We've got people from there. We've got people from Washington State and Arkansas, all these different places. That we all have different backgrounds. We all have different educations. Some were raised as Baptists. Some were raised as this. Some were, uh, were we, we have all these different things that, that, can, that come about. And none of that really matters. As long as we're united in Christ. Now we all also share this in common. We have skeletons in the closet. We have those memories that we don't we, we would like to forget and we don't want you to know about. But Christ has seen those and He's washed them all away. He's taken all of that away. You see, Jesus' purpose was to reconcile men and women to God regardless of race, ethnicity, or sinful past. And he did this in one body, 
the church. Now, I want you to think about this. I, I mentioned earlier a church in Phoenix that I want to go to. That's going to be com- it's going to be completely different from our church. But they're part of one body. One Lord, one Savior, one God. Huh? It doesn't matter. You know, well, they... It doesn't matter what language they worship in. It matters what Savior they're saved from and what God they're honoring. And so we look at this. We're one body, the church. And so we have all those things brought together. And and so uh, as we look at that, the good news was proclaimed to all. Ephesians 2.18. For through him, and this is a powerful verse to me, this would be one you might want to underline in your Bible or highlight, you know, for through him, through Jesus, we both, both, Jew, Gentile, good little Christian girl, horrible, awful, rotten guy, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. We both have access doesn't matter where you came from, where you started. It's not how you start, it's, how, it's who you finish with. And so we both have access in one spirit to the Father, which means that we have access to God by one Holy Spirit, and we have access to God through redemption by grace, through the blood of Christ Jesus, and the good news is proclaimed to all. But now what will you do with this access? What will you do with this access? You have access to wisdom. Will you seek wisdom? You have access to love, peace, and grace. Will you bear the fruit of love, peace, and grace? You have access to Holy Spirit guidance, strength, equipping, empowering, encouragement. Will you walk in step with the Spirit so you can experience that. What will we do with the access that Christ has provided? What will we do with the access that Christ has provided? Make sure you've received the primary blessing of Christ and that you've been reconciled to God through salvation And all your sins are forgiven. You have eternal life. The Holy Spirit lives in you. And now you have access to God's wisdom, strength, and power. You have access to his will. You have access to his grace 24-7. Make sure you get that primary blessing. And then, as we've received that primary blessing, and we've been reconciled to God, let's be in prayer and work on making sure that we are a a positive part of that secondary blessing of reconciling men and women to men and women. That we are a part of the reconciliation uh, of populations. Well, how do we do that? Those people are so yucky. Well, those people probably need love and compassion. Those people, they're, yeah, they're not like you, but you can pray for them. Uh, They're not going to listen. Well, they're not going to listen if you don't give them a, a message worth listening to. We, as we've received reconciliation with God through Christ, we want to be a part of reconciliation of men and women to Christ. And then as we see them develop a relationship with Christ, they're going to begin to see reconciliation in their relationships and in their life. Let's be, let's be a center of reconciliation. Not in a political sense, but in a spiritual sense. Because there's nothing more powerful on this planet than men and women, boys and girls, coming to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And we as a church can't afford to forget that. We just can't afford to to forget that.
I want to see men and women, boys and girls, reconciled to God through faith in Jesus Christ so then healing and reconciliation can commence. But without the primary blessing, we're not going to see the secondary blessing. We have access. What are we going to do with that access?